Can you change the course of a fixture in pre-match just by looking at the squad's mental attributes? Oh yes, you can. Let's go to the video. Hello and welcome back to FM22 with Old Man Phil. And welcome to Rodney Parade Newport where things are getting crazier and crazier by the day. And if you um, are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, click the bell and do all that stuff and help the channel grow and follow along with us. If you um, are already following, you'll know that we were we left you currently top of the Skybet League 1. We were three points ahead of Blackpool and Sunderland and we had kind of lost our way a little bit. Um, in terms of the end of the transfer window, as I said at the time, we didn't get involved. And in fact, the only two bits of business that we did were to release Scott Bennett and Jermaine Hilton, Bennett to Swindon, Hilton to Port Vale, both on loan deals. And that was all we actually did in terms of the transfer. It wasn't the right time to be getting involved in transfers. And um, in terms of performance on the pitch, well, we left you after beating Shrewsbury 3-0, and we followed that by a brilliant 3-0 win away at Cheltenham, and then another impressive 1-0 win against Burton at home. That was followed by another win against Wickham by three goals to one, and then a very creditable draw, 1-1 draw against Oxford. And then the most savage beating that we have ever had. And the scoreline there says 4-0, but actually that could have been 8-0. Um, and we were very fortunate to come away with just a 4-0 defeat. It was a total embarrassment. And um, I, I'd like to show you the highlights, but I really don't want to watch them again. But it did leave me with a little bit of a problem. Um, because I then stupidly went and spoke to the squad and said, ah, put that behind you, it'll be okay. And that upset them even more. And morale just absolutely plummeted. Uh, they all got upset and they didn't want to play. Um, and so now I'm faced with a problem. And if this was actually reflecting real life, what I would actually be looking at for the next game is their state of mind. Um, and I, in particular, I'd be focusing on how determined are they to put that behind them. I'd need bravery. I want people to put their bodies on the line. I'd need a sense of good teamwork, working together, following instructions. I'd need a slightly aggressive um, team. So I went to look at the mentals only. I forgot about everything else. And I just looked at the team's mentals and I decided I'm going to set up the team just by looking at this screen. And so that is exactly what I did. And I focused on, on those five attributes that I've mentioned. Um, um, firstly, bravery and determination, hard working, teamwork and aggression. And I put a team together that was pretty much based on only those five things. There were some I wanted to be in the side but were not available, but in the end I came up with a side um, that was my most, uh, my best team in terms of its mental ability. And a couple of surprises in there, um, in that Collins, the young boy, um, he was in that side. And I decided, yeah, we're going to go with this. And also Livermore, who was also a very young boy in midfield, um, not had much playing time, but his mentals were good, extremely good determination. And playing Sweeney at centre-back, um, which was something that he could do, but he hadn't been playing there very regularly. So this was a huge gamble, just going and forgetting about their other attributes, their um, te technicals and their physicals, but just going into this game because we want to win it and we want to recover. And uh, the funny thing is, is that this is what happened. And we did get off to a very good start. And look who's coming up in support here. It's young Livermore. 
And, and what a good decision to put him into the side. That was absolutely fabulous. We then got a penalty which Lewis buried. He doesn't miss many. And um, we were comfortably 2-0 up. And very quickly after that, like the icing on the cake of what we just did was Collins breaking into the penalty box and burying it into the top corner. And that is just absolutely amazing because we had brought in those two young boys in what was possibly the most important fixture, the season-defining fixture. Had we lost this, it could have all gone downhill. And we brought them in and uh, based on their mentors, and they went and did the business for us. And so um, let's get off to now the next big game, which is against Sunderland. And this is a very, very big game for us. Um, and so the team for the Sunderland match is Day in goal, Pask, Farkasson and Sweeney at the back, Sterry and Lewis at wing backs. We are tired, but they need to play. And Williams and Lakin will partner each other in midfield. And once again, Livermore keeps his place. Um, he'll play as an attacking midfielder. And then Nuttall and Collins also keeps his place at the expense of Timmy Abraham, who is the league's leading scorer. It's, it's obviously risky, but it's a game we want to win. And I'm in a bit of trouble figuring out what to tell them, but we'll just say that go out and do what you did in the last game and you will be fine. And so the game gets out of way. And I don't know what, what FM does, but my nerves are like tingling. This is a huge game. And I suspect whoever wins this will be title contenders. And whoever loses this game will probably find themselves in the playoffs. It's that big a game. One against two. And here comes Lakin. And he gives it to Collins. And that was a chance. What a chance Collins had there. And maybe that was his composure just letting him down a little bit. But it's a good start. And uh, we are pretty much on top in the game. And we are doing very, very well at the moment. Touch wood. Um, and hopefully this will continue. And there's Farkasson. And I hope that Farkasson has a good game. He was... Absolutely outstanding at the beginning of the season, but then fell away slightly. But he's managed to work his way back into the team. I hope he has a good game today. And here comes Livermore. Livermore feeds Lake in, and that was another chance. And we had changed the um, formation, the, the system today. We're going to play a little bit more narrow, and we went back to three at the back which would give Sunderland um, something to think about because I'm sure they would have been expecting us to play four at the back. And so they had a little bit to think about um, an hour before kickoff. Uh, and 20 minutes gone, things are going very, very well. I don't feel that um, Sunderland have offered anything really in this game. And uh, all the highlights have, have been Newport, but my nerves are absolutely shattered here. And he, he gives it to Farkasson. And um, we're passing it around, hopefully, playing it out of the back. No need to panic. We don't, um, we don't just launch long balls forward. We're going to play it out. And then suddenly, when we get nearer to their um, final third, we'll up... The, and there's a pass through to Collins, and Collins, and he, and that's a mistake by Wisden, and Collins said, thank you very much, and buried that, and that is exactly what we wanted, it's Newport 1, Sunderland nil, and what an error by Wisden, what an absolute shocking error, <clears throat> and just a speculative through ball by, oh, that was a terrible error, and Collins just buried it. He doesn't. He's not going to miss that. And that is that is a perfect start, a dream start. Um, and to be one nil up against Sunderland, who are second behind us, is absolutely fabulous at half time. And we're just going to tell them that I'm very very pleased with how we're controlling the game. Passing has been a joy, and we need to just keep going, keep doing more of that, and we'll win this game. And so the second half gets underway and if we can win this then this will be absolutely fabulous as Bishop does some 
I'm not quite sure what he's auditioning for there, but it was very impressive. And here comes Sunderland. Pritchard, who scored against us in the last game we played against them, and he fires it wide. I do remember Pritchard from my Norwich days way back. Um, I think in uh, FM 20, 21, 21 maybe. Very, very good player he was then for Norwich. Um, but 64 minutes gone and nothing seems to be going on. We're going to make a, a change. We have uh, one or two tired players out there. And we're going to bring on Upson um, in midfield for Lakin. And here is Upson over a free kick. And that's floated in and Farkerson <laughs> scored. What a substitution. What a manager. Perfect timing, and that is 2-0 to Newport, and that, well, that's got to be the substitution of the season. What a free kick by Upson. Farkas leapt like a salmon and headed it home, and we are 2-0 up, and I'm a very happy man, as you can tell. And I don't know why, because it's just the game, but I do get very excited when we're winning. Um, unlike the Wimbledon affair, where I got very, very depressed. But it's always nice to win, and all we got to do now is hold out. I know that they're very tired. Sunderland are a bit fresher than us, having not played for a week. We played just a couple of days ago, and I know they're tired, and maybe we need to just um, pull off them now, not press so much, um, and just see the game out in a very cautious manner while Sunderland play it around the penalty area. And that's exactly what we're set up to do. We do not want them going out wide. We know how well they can cross the ball. And that was perfect, perfect defensive work. Um, making them shoot from long range because they're not great at it. And here comes Haynes. Haynes, are we going to score again? It would be marvellous if we could really put one over Sunderland here. Livermore, who's really taken his chance. He's the last two games... Livermore has been absolutely outstanding. Farkerson, he gives it to Story. Story passes inside, and that's a lovely ball, but it's cleared up by Sunderland. And here comes Sunderland on the break. We have just 20 minutes to go. Can we hold on for that 20 minutes? I'm, I can see we have some very tired players, and here's Pritchard and Pritchard. I'm surprised. I thought he was going to put that away. Um, I thought FM were going to play with my nerves a little bit, um, but he missed that. We're going to make some substitutions, and I think I'm just going to make sure that we're fresh at the back. So we're going to bring on um, two defenders um, just to give us some extra legs in defense. There's five minutes left to go. We are in this game. We are winning this game. We are going further top at the top of the league, and that is full time. It's Sunderland. Beaten. Newport 2, Sunderland 0. And you can see from that that we are now 9 points clear of Oxford and 11 points clear of Blackburn. And there are just 9 games to go. And things are looking very, very good indeed. Although it does give me worries about how on earth this team would cope if we actually got up to the um, higher echelons and went into the Skybet Championship. Teams around us also won, but we have extended our lead. The most important thing was that Sunderland lost, and that means that we have gone even further clear at the top of the league. And that's, I need to calm down a little bit um, and um, take a look at what we've got coming up in the near future. And uh, unfortunately, I think I can see there um, that Livermore now is entitled to a pay rise. I mean, he must have put something in his contract. Yeah, after 20 games, he can get a pay rise. And uh, yeah, there we go. Farkasson, absolutely impressive. For, um, and, and it's good to see Farkasson coming back to the old days. I mean, he had a super start to the season, and it's nice to see him having a good game like that. And in terms of fixtures, we're coming to the end of the season. Um, we have uh, All of them are very, very tough fixtures now, and I think we will probably come back around about somewhere near the Fleetwood fixture just before the run-in. 
And and I think I just need to go and have a lie down because that was um, that blew my mind. And I'm so excited and and ready now for the running. So I will see you in the f next episode.